All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Low Country Fishing. So if you remember in last week's video, we caught a really nice cobia. And while I was filleting that fish out, an idea kind of came to me to do something a little bit different, something that I've never seen done with cobia. Now, what I'm gonna do in today's video is I'm gonna show you guys how to cook saltwater quail. Now, if you guys remember, way back in the beginning when I started Low Country Fishing, I did a redfish saltwater quail video. And I tell you, man, the belly meat or the breast meat that's on these fish are some of the best tasting meat out there, right? It's just a big chunk of meat that doesn't really get exercised a lot. And with that redfish, it was extremely buttery. So what I wanna do today is I wanna experiment and see what the belly meat on a cobia tastes like. So here we go, here's what we got. This is what everyone likes to call saltwater quail. Now, if you guys see, this thing actually looks kind of like a bird. You got the wings here, which are the, uh, the, the peck fins on the cobia. You got a little bit more of a uh, belly fin. I'm not honestly sure the term of this thing right here. But on the back side, if you flip this thing over, look at the thick chunk of meat on this thing. I mean, that is a really nice, thick quality piece of meat. Now, um, as far as keeping this thing as pretty as I possibly could, I didn't get an opportunity to do that because the thought didn't really come to me until after I had already cleaned off this portion. I saw how thick the belly meat was, so I kind of recorrected over here and I left a big old chunk of belly meat. So for those of you that want to try this on your next cobia, I would recommend to leave as much belly meat on the right side as well as the left side. That way you can get some really nice chunks and some thick fillets. But either way, we have a really nice piece of meat here and we still have some good quality meat right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really just kind of clean this thing up. I don't have a deep fryer big enough to, to batter and throw this whole thing in because I am gonna be battering this fish. I can tell you with the meat that we pulled off of that, I broiled it, I blackened some of it, and I've been just kind of eating on that for the past two days. So now that I know what cobia tastes like again, cause it's been about a year or so since I ate it, I'm ready to fry this thing up and taste it with a really nice tasty sauce. So. Let's go ahead and pull out the old seven inch medium flex sword filet knife. Now, if you guys are in the market for a filet knife, guys, this thing right here is amazing. It's got a really nice anti-corrosive coating on it. It's got a full carbon steel blade, which is extremely sharp. And again, that handle is extremely comfortable. I have the five inch utility knife as well. And one of my buddies grabbed a hold of it the other day and was just blown away at how comfortable this knife feels in their hand. So here we go. Let's set this thing down and let's just kind of work through it together. Now, what I obviously want to do, <laughs> get the flies out of here for one, is try to figure out where the best pieces of meat are going to be, right? So I kind of just want to feel my way through it at first. And what I'm noticing right off the bat is the fins here are extremely bony up around the collar here because this is where the gills is and this is where the head would be right here. This is a plate. You hear that right there? That is a really super hard plate. So I'm gonna take the seven inch knife along with some uh, just normal kitchen shears. And I do wanna work through this and see if I can just get some nice fillets out of here. So we'll just cut through just like that. That was actually pretty easy. I'll come through right here on this bottom side, cut through like that, flip her over. This is where I notice I have these little fins right here. So I need to cut around the meat kind of like that. And <laughs> there you go. How about that? Got the bones out and now we can focus on the big chunk of meat right down here. All right. So now that I have the big old slab of rooney of meat, look at this guys. This is a gigantic piece of meat. Now, what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and just start cutting this thing into strips. Now, with this, you could probably just cook this thing whole. You could put it on a smoker, smoke it. Uh, you could probably fry it whole. You can bake it, broil it just like that. But me, again, like I mentioned earlier, I kind of just want to do some fried fish fingers. So what I'll do here is take my knife and I'll just start cutting this into strips. Now, one of the things you have to remember with cobia, their skin is like leather. So make sure you have a sharp knife and when you're done using your knife, go ahead and put another uh, edge back on it because it will dull that knife really, really quick. But like I mentioned in the previous video, these sword knives are, uh, they come incredibly sharp right out of the box. You don't even really have to do anything to them. So there's that, keep going just like that. And 
like that. Now look, look how pretty that meat is. And one of the things you guys might notice is right on the bottom, it, it doesn't look like there's much of a bloodline. There's a lot of bloodline on like the sides of the fish that you do have to kind of cut around. But here on this belly meat, I'm not really seeing too much of the bloodline. It's kind of looking all consistent. Starting to get into a little bit of it right here. So let's just keep working through and let's see how this turns out. So with any fish that I fillet, to get the skin off, you just kind of take it over to the side of your cutting board just like this and just kind of start working through it here. Flip her over, pull through, and there you go. Wow, you guys, this, this looks awesome. This is gonna be a really nice piece of meat. One of the things I do wanna do is go ahead and remove this little bit of a membrane right here. And I do wanna check it because I'm starting, I am noticing that there are some uh, some belly bones or just some bones in general right there. So let's go ahead, get out of here. These, these flies in Georgia are insane right now. So I'll just cut that skin off just like that. Come back through the backside like that. Got the membrane off and that looks really, really good. Got a couple bones right here. You take just a second, cut those out. And this is honestly where I, I just take my time. I enjoy the process. I enjoy the catch. I like to clean and I enjoy the cook too. So just slow it down and enjoy the whole process. Don't feel like you have to be in a giant rush. And that's it. I'll go ahead and chop that baby in half just like that. And I tell you, that's, that's looking really, really good already. So let's go ahead and let's cut into one more piece here and see how this looks. I'm digging it though. I think this is gonna be delicious. All right, so I got the fish all filleted out and put in or cut into small little bite-sized pieces just like this. Now guys, I'm a big fan of serving little fish nuggets or little fish fingers like this because one, it's easy for me to eat, but it's also easy for my kids. So let's get these things seasoned up. Now, I don't like to use really bold flavors when I'm trying something for the first time. I like to use flavors that I am familiar with. And as far as the season on the fish, it's gonna be this one here. It's gonna be Everglades Fish and Chicken. This is my absolute go-to. I'm a Florida native. This stuff comes from Florida. I've been eating it for years, even before I found it on the shelves here in uh, the low country as well as Georgia. But if you guys get an opportunity, make sure you do pick up this seasoning because it's good. It's not really heavy on salt. It's kind of heavy on flavor. So what we'll do is we'll just lightly season the fish just like this. Just go ahead and give it a nice little coating. I don't want to overdo it and overpower the original, the, uh, the base seasoning because this Louisiana breader here does have a little bit of uh, seasoning mixed into it and some salt. So once I got it like that, so I'll pull out the old gallon Ziploc bag in my pocket and we're just going to dump a little bit of this seasoning in here just like that. I'm a big fan of adding fish to the seasoning instead of putting the seasoned fish in the bag first and then throwing stuff on top it just kind of pulls a little bit of that salt that's in the fish off of it so i'll dump it in the bag and let's just go ahead and give this a nice a nice little shake now with any of my fish like i do and like i talk about in these videos i do like to uh, let the the coating or the seasoning sit on the fish for about a minute or so it gives it a really good chance for everything to kind of coat and adhere and allow any moisture that's on that fish to absorb the seasoning. And uh, it, it helps, it really does help because in the process of frying fish, if you go a little bit too quick, all that batter will, will come back off. So I'll let this sit in the batter here for just about another minute or so. And then we're gonna drop this thing in to the grease. And it's not gonna take but just a couple minutes. All right, so let's drop this fish in. Now my oil, I just tempted it, is hovering right around 375. You don't want to really have your oil too much hotter than that because the batter will burn a lot quicker than the fish will cook. And I'm going to go ahead and just put all of it in here at once. It didn't make a lot of, a lot of meat because again, like I said, when I was originally filleting the fish out, I didn't pay attention or the idea didn't come to me at that point to save the other little portion of that belly meat. Now I did wind up eating it 
inadvertently with the rest of the meat. But I didn't get a chance to fry it. I'm excited to fry. All right, so let's make a fancy sauce. Now guys, this is a sauce that I've been uh, hooked on for quite some time now, and it's the Buffalo Wow Wings Asian Zing. It's got a little bit of a, kind of a soy base to it, a little bit of heat and some really good sweetness, as well as some good salt to it as well. And you know, you could, you could take this and add it to a little mayonnaise and have a really nice dipping sauce, but uh, I just kind of want to go with this and not do too much, uh, too much fat with it. So we'll just squeeze this in the little bowl, just like that. And that is it for the dipping sauce. So now we'll just give our fish a little bit of a stir, just another minute or two on it, and we're gonna be ready to eat some fish because I'm hungry. All right, so it's been about four minutes. Let's go ahead and pull the fish. And boy, that looks good. That's, that is the color we want. I love uh, a nice little, kind of a golden brown crispiness to it. I'm a big crispy fan, so sometimes I'll let my fish sit in there for about a minute longer than when normal people would pull it out, but that's just because uh, I like it crispy. My dad grew up eating crispy fish and uh, he was the crispy king. <laughs> now I'm the crispy king. So here we go, check that out. Look how beautiful that is. That is, that's gonna be dynamite. I would love to grab that and pop one in my mouth right now, but I know it's gonna burn me up. So we'll give that just a second to cool down. All right, let's give this a try. I don't think it's going to burn my mouth too bad. No, we are. Mmm, that is so much better than the way I had it before. Uh, the, the cobia that I've been eating before has been kind of broiled and blackened, and the meat is kind of real steaky, but this is a lot more buttery. It's real tender, kind of like if you compare tenderloin to, say, sirloin steak. This is real, real tender, kind of like a tenderloin would be. And, of course, let's go ahead and hit it with a little bit of heat. Hmm. I'll tell you, man, that's good. This, this Asian zing right here is where it's at. You could put this on a piece of shoe leather and it would probably taste really good. But that's all I got for today, you guys. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a cleaning and cooking session. It's uh, fun to get out here and to experiment with new dishes and new foods. And now I'm just going to take it into my house, see if my kids and my wife enjoy it. And if I get a good thumbs up from them, then uh, definitely be a win in my book. So take care, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.